Hi, I'm Debbie with Mortgage Mom Radio, and this is Workshop 105. What are we doing today? Well, we're talking all about credit. Why are we talking about credit? Because it is such an important piece in the home loan process. And why do I have this guy sitting next to me? So say good morning, Steve. Good morning, Steve. I love that. Uh, Steve Altonian with Credit Law Solutions. And what does he do for a living? He fixes credit. He is a credit repair company. So why not have the very best here to teach you guys all about credit, all of the tips and tricks of the trade to get make sure that your credit score is as high as you can possibly get it. And why is that important? Because that is what determines what loan program that Mortgage Mom Radio can put you in. Can I give you down payment assistance? Can we look at a Fannie Mae or a conventional loan versus an FHA loan? Mm -hmm. All of that is so important when it comes to credit and what that credit score is. And hey, by the way, did you know that you get a better interest rate and better monthly mortgage insurance the higher that your credit score is? So all of these things really do matter. And even if you have good credit today, make it better. Make it as high as you can possibly get it. It makes your loan process easier and it makes getting that approval so much better and faster. So we're going to um, go through just a couple of things really quick that I want to make sure we touch on before we have Steve get right into his piece and um, this is important because we want you guys to start asking us questions right now you can start writing your questions right into the feed right during this premiere I'm on and I'm gonna be answering all of those questions for you but you can also text the word mom text mom to four seven four seven four seven and send me your questions there I will actually move those from the text message app and over to the live feed during the premiere so that you can see those answers the other thing that is so important with the phone app is that this is the tool that you need on your phone at your fingertips when you're out buying a home when you're out walking through open houses when you're sitting on the couch at night and you're scrolling through Redfin and you find that house that you mm-hmm. might really want to buy right I mean that's how we do it don't that's we how we do we all, sit, we all sit around and you know we're, we're searching Redfin and we're searching realtor.com and we see a house that we really like and wouldn't you like to know whether you can afford it well the phone app is going to do that for you so when you text the word mom to 474747 you're going to get a link to the phone app click on it it's that simple you're gonna save it to your home screen and now you've got all of the tools that you need you can go back and you can uh, listen to previous podcasts and all of the information that we give you there hours and hours and hours of education for you you can run calculators and that's the most important piece if you're an FHA buyer a conventional buyer with less than 20% down payment it's gonna run the mortgage insurance for you if you're a veteran it's gonna add that funding fee to your finance dollar amount wow. so it's actually giving you the payment payment that you can that you can count on the other thing is that if you put less than five percent down and you know this just like mm-hmm. we just mentioned with credit right. the the amount of mortgage insurance on a conventional loan is based on your credit score so the calculator is actually directly connected to one of the mortgage insurance companies and when you put in your credit score it will then give you a quote of what that mortgage insurance will be monthly so it's really a fantastic tool you can apply online you can do just about anything you need you can email me email Heidi email Larry maybe I need to add you Steve to that phone App. that might be a good one Absolutely. Uh, but you can basically do just about everything that you need to do from this phone app and it's really important so if you haven't done it already text the word mom to four seven four seven four seven save the link save it to your home screen get it on your phone have that mortgage tool at your fingertips and start sending me some questions write them in the feed or text them on over to me if you're a little bit embarrassed you don't want people to see your name and what your question is text it over and I'll try and I'll, I'll I'll answer that question for you so with no further ado we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get on over to Steve with credit loss solutions and uh, I, I saw a little bit earlier, though, that you actually had your feet up and I could see you wearing your cowboy boots. And I don't know if everybody out there can see it, but I got my cowboy boots on today, too. So Look at those. And those are some gorgeous they boots. They are. They're absolutely, I love them. They're so gorgeous. And, you know, the majority of our listeners are on Go Country 105 and listen to the radio show in the morning. And so um, deep down at heart, you know, I'm definitely a country girl from Illinois and everything. So this was not planned, though. That's the funny thing. As I said, come on in, let's do this. And this is how I was dressed. And that's how you showed that's up. Right. So I love it. And that's why we call you you the credit cowboy that's right <laughs> all right so Steve get ahead go ahead and get started and I do want you to know that I'm gonna stop you and I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions that I think that my listeners would be thinking as they're watching us do this presentation so be prepared for me to jump in and 
nudge, nudge a little bit. Fair enough. All that right. sounds great. All right, here we go. That's great. Um, just you know, want to let you know that uh, everything starts with credit. You can't do anything in America without credit. That's the way our system is built. And home mortgages, just like Mortgage Mom said, is built around the credit score and all starts with credit. So what does your credit score consist of? What does your credit report consist of? What's well, five basic things? And one is inquiries. Now, an inquiry is when you're inquiring for new money. You want to kind of watch how you do your inquiries. Okay, but I do want you to touch really quick on, because I've we've talked about it on the radio show a couple mm-hmm. weeks back, and then I actually have had about four people just this week call me who had applied with other lenders, mm-hmm. and they were really worried about reapplying with me, very discouraged. Other lenders had told them no, or you know there, there was nothing that they could do. Credit score was too low. And I, I had to reinforce that that's okay, that I can repull credit. So talk about that for a minute, just since we hit inquiries. Sure. Well, when you're looking for a loan, you have to pull your credit report from that specific lender that you want to get to. So during a 14 to 45 day period, you are given the right to shop, which means you can pull your credit as many times as you darn well please without getting multiple hits on your score. You're going to have one inquiry for all of those. So let's say you go to six people before you finally decide and come to your senses to come to Mortgage Mom Radio. When you do that, your only score that's- That was a time, great plug. I love that. That was an awesome plug. Got to take going. care of my girl here. <laughs> All right. The, the only time you're going to get the, the hit is going to be on the first initial inquiry. So keep it to 14 days. It goes technically technically to 30 days, but 14 days is your best bet because some of the scoring models do differ. Mm-hmm. Now, um, ask, a- answer one more question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get this question a lot, and obviously I know the answer, but the, you're the credit guy, and, and I'm letting you do this piece, so I'm going to let you keep answering. Um, but you know, I have a lot of people- People that get confused, they don't understand why when I pull the credit report, my credit score that I get, that I see, is different than what they see on Credit Karma or watching their own Experian credit report, one of those services, which, by the way, I've actually, I monitor with all three, and right. recently I've noticed that it's starting to get a little closer than what it used to be. But can you explain a little bit why it might be different when a lender pulls it versus what they're seeing? Sure. So you have FICO, which is Fair Isaac Corporation, and everybody else is FACO. Oh, so that's what FICO stands for, huh? Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Fair Isaac Corporation and everything else, it's off. So Experian is probably the closest one as far as scoring model, but the reason on Credit Karma and how many people use Credit Karma out there? A lot. A lot of them do. Mm -hmm. So the reason for the scoring difference is if you look on Credit Karma, it says based on Vantage 3.0. It's a score that they have based on their model. It's not based on Fair Isaac Corporation. And not only that, the biggest difference is a lender's criteria is more narrow than Experian because guess what? She's going to lo- loan you a half million dollars mm-hmm. and they want to make sure you have the ability to pay back that loan uh, in, a, in a good and solid way. So they want to make sure that their criteria is what you're going by. So it's a more narrow search field. Right. So I always explain to everybody that we actually tell the credit bureaus what we want them to score the credit score against. Correct. So when we pull, we're saying we want to know, you know, do they have a mortgage? Has it been paid on time? What is the ratio of debt to open credit card balances, you know, collection accounts? And we're giving them those, that criteria that we're asking them to return a score based on those specific things. So it will be a little bit different than like a raw score that you'd get you Correct. know looking at Experian or so okay I'm sorry I totally miss I, I I keep jumping in and asking you questions and I I'm, I'm getting you out of your flow no, so I actually I'm, I'm gonna flow with the flow I like it I yeah. like it we're gonna flow together we're gonna flow with the flow <laughs> All right. so the, another factor about 10% is the types of credit that you use so people want to want to say hey you know should I get a, a car loan is that gonna help my my credit um, or should I get a credit card well Suffice to say, revolving credit is going to help your score more. It's a little more volatile. However, you can increase your limits. Um, They do also report monthly, and it's a different dynamic than an installment. You do want to have a mix and match of your types of credit. You want to be balanced, but revolving is where you're going to stick to to get the most impact on your score. Yeah, and I have a lot of I have a lot of people ask me if I pay off my car loan, will my credit score go up? And I typically tell them no. 
It'll go down. It, it, and yeah, mm-hmm. say, say that louder. Say that it louder. It will go down. Yeah. So, you know, installment debt, the longer that you've had that account, right, mm-hmm. the more credit history that you have on it. As soon as you pay it off, then it's gone. You know, that, that, that credit is gone. It's basically no longer reporting and it's not an open you know, an open installment loan anymore, which is why you're saying it would go down. Where with a a credit card, if you pay off a credit card, you're going to see a very large difference in where your credit score goes, Is especially if it was maxed out. So, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of touch on that because I get that question a lot. The other one that I get a lot is paying off a mortgage. Some people will sell their home first and actually move in with family or temporary rental or something because maybe they couldn't find another home or, um, you know, during their escrow period of selling it, maybe they want to get all of their proceeds and they want to pay some debt off before they jump in and go do the next financing. And a lot of times they think that their credit score will actually get better Mm. when they pay off that mortgage. Mm. And a lot of times I've seen it go down. It does go down because you stop the, the length of history stops immediately. And then the next thing is when they apply for the next loan, now they have the inquiry. So, and then they get on the, the new trade line. So their score will go down, but trust and believe if mortgage mom can get you into a loan, she's going to get you into a loan. That's right. <laughs> That's what that is right. Yes, absolutely. All right. So payment history, let's talk about that. Yeah. <clears throat> payment history, how you pay your debt. Do you pay on time? Do you pay late? Are you lazy? It's really important. And lenders are no different than you and I. If you loan someone 20 bucks and they don't pay you back, what's going to happen next time someone wants to loan you? borrow 20 bucks from you no absolutely not it ain't happening so i need to i need to get that rule going with my kids though because for some reason they keep asking to borrow money and i never see it come back (laughs) yeah i don't know if it's really borrowing i just tell them look why are you asking to borrow i'm just giving it to you right it's like when people ask you if they can borrow a piece of gum you're like you can keep it (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right so payment history we need to make sure they're getting those paid on time pay on time um and just know this if you're 15 days late on a car note no harm, no foul. You can pay the little fee. Even on your mortgage, you can be 15 days late. You never want to be 30 days late. And as you get toward the end of the month, be careful of holiday weekends. Be careful of paying something on a Friday night after five online. It might not post till Monday and you will be in trouble with your lender. You'll have a, a late payment history. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, and one of the questions actually that we got again just a couple of weeks back, I mean, doing these workshops, it's been really great because we're getting questions from, you know, everybody everywhere and throughout, you know, this whole workshop. You know, we're, we're doing, usually you come out to my workshops with me in person and it's a three-hour event and we've got to go pretty quick through the information and we don't get to spend as much time, you know, on each individual piece to, to really help people understand because you we could never keep them in their seats that long. I mean, right. they, they would lose their mind. Um, but one of the questions that we actually got was a, a woman uh, emailed in and she asked, uh, how much will the credit score go down if I miss a car loan? or if I miss a payment. And uh, that's a really hard one to answer. So Mm. I know how I answered it. I'm going to see how you answer it. Let's see if we're we're close. Well, it's, it does depend upon your overall credit profile. It's kind of like weight. I can put on 15 pounds and look different than a Debbie puts on 15 pounds. Different, (laughs) different dynamics. I won't even wear the same (laughs) dress if I put on 15 pounds. I'm so sure. Absolutely different (laughs) dynamic. But on average, you're probably going to drop 60 to 110 points. Wow. That that, Barry, that's right about where I was at. I'm pretty sure we did that oh, one on the show. Yeah. And uh, that's what I said. I said, it really depends on what's on your credit report today. Mm-hmm. How many open active trade lines do you have? How long have they been open? How many times, you know, how often are they paid on time? Is your uh, debt to, you know, how much you owe in comparison to what's open availability right. you know th- all of that is going to make a difference in how all much that that will hit you but it is a big one and i think i guessed about 60 and i think i said 60 to 120 so right. we were we were very very close so i love that okay awesome yeah. and then the other thing on this slide that we didn't talk about because i keep i'm bouncing you around um is outstanding debt yeah so um that's basically utilization um another another term for it so what is utilization it's how much you have accessible let's say it's ten thousand dollars and what percentage of that you use so if you use three grand you'd be at thirty percent ideally the credit cowboy wants you below ten percent people hate it but trust me when I tell you it's not much fun but if you want the most bang for your buck on your credit score less is more keep in mind 
they want you to not live off your credit cards. Mm -hmm. So if someone's using their cards too much, it appears that maybe they're having financial problems. That's why you get the dip in the score. Right. All right. So here's a question that uh, I don't actually know the answer to. So let's see if we I can either stump you or get a response, get okay. an answer. Good. All right. So uh, a lot of times I will, one of the parts of my job is to work with people and get outside of the box and see the gray area. And they call me up and we're looking at a credit score and, you know, we've got a 620 and we really need 640. They really want that down payment assistance. So I'm running the simulator to see what can I do to get that credit score up. And a lot of times it will tell me to have them pay down the balance on the credit card, but to leave the balance $10. Right. Why? Now, I mean, obviously we're bringing down the utilization. Right. The reason in my head that I would think that they would go there is that you don't want it to look like a stale account. You don't want it to be a zero balance as though it's not being used, but that may not be the answer. So I thought maybe you know it. Well, basically you did come up with the answer. Here's the downside to paying it off. And this is why, you know, and people go back and forth about this. You'll hear all kinds of different ideas. You pay it off, it's at zero. However, there are stale accounts. There are accounts that are closed. And that can be taken into account when if you leave a couple bucks on it, guess what you're showing? It's an active open account. So you leave it, you leave it not to chance. Why do I tell people to pay their cards down? It's because I know people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If All I right, elaborate, if elaborate. If I leave it to chance, they're not going to do exactly what I say. So for I, I just make it simple. Pay your cards off. But she's correct on simulators it will say oftentimes your score is going to be higher to leave a few dollars on there so it's not bad my main thing is i'm trying to get people to pay their cards and pay them on time right but she's correct in the algorithm oftentimes you leave a few bucks on there your score will be better and you're oftentimes fighting for every single point. Right. That can make the difference between getting a loan and not getting a loan. Right. Now, here's a, a couple things on this slide, actually, that you have going on that I want you to talk about, too, is, um, you know, public record information, collection accounts, uh, you know, I know that all of that is going to, we, we, obviously we see it all on all of the credit reports. If you've got collections, we see the collections. If you have, um, you know, public records like a bankruptcy, those are there. Um, but let's talk a little bit about tax liens because that's actually something that just happened last year in 2018. It was early 18, right? That they, right. that they changed that. So if you used to have a tax lien, you don't see that on the credit report anymore. Um, but does that affect their credit in any way? Is there any way for the credit bureaus to know that that tax lien is there? Right. So the way it worked out, it actually started two years ago, 2017. Okay. They, right. did, they did a test and they put less information on there. And guess who did not come up with all the information that um, Experian TransUnion and Equifax wanted? The companies. So they decided the next year we're going to just go ahead and not include them on the scoring model. Okay. So it does not affect the score at all. Tax liens are not on the credit reports anymore. However, from a lending standpoint, as I'm sure you probably have gone over on some of your shows, um, they will find it. If oh, you yes. owe money, they're going to find it. But as far as impacting your scores, tax liens are not on your public records any longer. And obviously, if they're not on there, there's going to be no impact on your on your credit score. Very nice. And one thing to keep in mind, you guys, when we do talk about tax liens, that is something that I've had that question come up quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And people believe that they cannot get financed because they have a tax lien. And that is actually not the truth. As long as you do have a payment installment or arrangement in place with the IRS or with the state, whoever's got that tax lien against you, if we can see that you've made you know a couple of monthly payments and we can see a copy of the arrangement that was put together in place and we can qualify you carrying that monthly payment as part of your debt, then we can still get you into a home that will not stop you from getting your financing. So that's a, pay, a big uh, mortgage mom tip for the day. Uh, but uh, all right, Steve, so let's go. Let's move on to the next one. Have a little bit of foresight in how to handle the IRS. Perfect. All right. I like yeah, it. I perfect. like it. Maybe we'll talk about that here at the very end. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right. So we, we talked a little bit about utilization and uh, utilization, you know, some people say, hey, you know, it's not possible for me to pay off my cards. You know, this is where I'm at. So what I would like to see people strive for is to get your cards as low as possible. Ideally, 30%. Why it's a different algorithm from 50%. 20% is, is another alg algorithm. And then, like I mentioned, under 10. However, if you don't have the finances, what do you do? 
Yeah, that's a great question. You know, we're telling people to pay down the debt, but if they're barely struggling and they're barely making it month to month, and you're also telling them that they need to keep making their payments on time, right. you know, which is one of the downsides of going through like a credit, uh, con- con- what are those called? Consolidation. Yeah, I don't know if it's a credit consolidation. It's one of those uh, credit, I don't know, uh, credit companies that try to help you get rid of the payment like the you know where they'll stop making a payment on one and then they'll pay it all to one and mm-hmm. i'm trying to think of what that's called credit counseling thank you credit counseling yeah and then they thrash your credit yeah and it kills your credit yeah. so we're, you know here we are we're trying to tell people make your payments on time make your payments on time and then they're also struggling because the payments are more than they can you know they're, they're barely making ends right. meet and then we're also telling them pay down the, the debt so um i'd love to hear the tip of that i want everybody listening to know that we are here we're live so So make sure that if you guys have questions for Steve, that you guys go ahead and start writing those right into the feed right now. And he can answer those questions for you. Also, 474747. You did it. That's right. Text mom to 474747 and you could ask the questions there and we'll transfer them over to the feed. That way, if you're a little bit worried about, you know, somebody seeing your name and the questions that you're answering or that you're asking, uh, that's not going to be on there. So, um, all right. So. Talk about that uh, credit uh, repair. Or what is it? What a credit counseling? I can't. I don't know why I keep losing it today. Yeah, I mean the downside is what they want you to do is they say give us five hundred to nine hundred dollars a month, and we're going to go ahead and settle all your accounts. What they do is they let everything go delinquent. Which guess what? You probably have already done that pretty good yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need them. No. You, you don't need them. And then what happens is they just let it go. Um, they'll negotiate a year or two down the road. There are a couple which are better than others um i'm not going to really fully endorse them but there are a couple that are better um about pain mm-hmm. whereas the others just let your credit get really really thrashed. yeah because my understanding with the credit counseling and sometimes they will advertise themselves as a credit consolidation company mm-hmm. without a loan so make sure that you guys really do your research but my understanding is what they do is they collect this money from you monthly they make you feel good about the fact that it's less money than what you're outputting today in total with all of your cards and then what they do is they let everything go delinquent on every single account but one they start taking that money and applying it to one card until it's paid off and then they take the money and apply it to the next one and they start negotiating but your credit is so bad at that point you've got 30 day late 60 day late 90 day late and you've got it for months and months and months and months and it just absolutely by the time that you were done honestly and I'm not an advocate but you should have filed bankruptcy because it would have been gone and you could have been actually cleared up with brand new credit reestablished within two years when you go through those companies and you don't owe any money and you (laughs) Don't owe the money back exactly. So you're free and clear. Yeah, not an endorsement for that. We want to make sure that we get you there without doing that. We want to see you buy a home this year. Um, But uh, so, so you were going to give them a tip as far as how do you get it paid down? Well, here's the thing. Okay, it's easy for me to say I'm an ivory tower to go ahead and pay down your your credit cards. Some people don't have the capacity when they come to me, and I try to to deal with everyone where they're at. Mm -hmm. If you're having difficulty, what works well is to try to do triple or quadruple payments. And that's definitely something that's workable. I'm going to tell you why. Because you have the money somewhere. (laughs) Stop eating sushi and going to Starbucks. Sushi, (laughs) Starbucks, Mickey D's. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. It's absolutely true. You know, I I, realistically, I I cook all the time Mm -hmm. at my house. I cook for for the week, several days. But that's a personal decision. But when you're going for a home, you do have to make sacrifices. Now, if you've done everything you can, and there's just nowhere else to get the points. That's kind of when you're going to need the credit cowboy. There you go. All right. So so let's talk about what you can do. Let's yeah. talk about what you can do for them. Right. All right. So when someone comes to me with a credit, you know, a credit report, and they say, "Hey, I, you know, I, I'm sent to you by my lender, Mortgage Mom Radio," and she said that I need some help. We always want to try to strip their credit report of as many derogatory items on the report. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that 15 to 45 pounds we're talking about, (laughs) the excess weight. You're not going to get there anywhere else. So we have to strip off anything that's derogatory. Late payments, charge-offs, and collections are the three main offenders. Mm Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is what Steve does for a living. This is actually his business. So, you know, this is the piece that where maybe you have tried to fix your credit on your own, that you haven't been able to do that. We all work normal jobs, you know, and not that they're all nine to five, but if you work full time, whether you're, you work midnight shift or you work day shift, you don't have the time to spend on your credit report that Steve does because that's what he does on a daily basis. His job is working on your credit report. But the other thing that I want to make sure everybody understands is that if he gets 
collections removed, if he gets things taken off of the credit report, that is fantastic, but that doesn't mean that you don't still owe the debt. Yeah. Yeah, I had the debt is still yours. You still yeah. owe it. It didn't go away. You just got you got very lucky that you hired Steve and he got it off the report that gives us a score that means that we can get you into homeownership. True story. Um, got a thirty five thousand dollar collection off of a guy's report. He calls me six months later and says, "Hey, so and so company's calling me for my thirty five grand." And I had to tell him very respectfully, sir, I, you know, for what we charge, you know, we're not going to make 35 grand go, go away, away, but right. we're going to get it off the report and you're going to get your loan and you know, you might have to deal with phone calls from them, but we do help scrub the credit. But, um, great, great point. Um, well, so let's talk about, you've got this list on here. So let's talk yeah. about what are the, you know, what are the things that are the easiest to get off the credit report? So well, if somebody's thinking about their credit report right now and you know that they have a bankruptcy, they have a foreclosure, they've got collection accounts, they've got late payments, you know, what are the easiest pieces to get off right away? Medical collections is by far the easiest and a couple of reasons. Okay. Not, you know, it doesn't even matter that I think it's really a travesty those end up on your credit report because you didn't sign a contract really to walk off the lot with something you didn't pay. But the fact of the matter is they can put medical collections on your credit report. Why are we effective getting them off? Well, part of it is our legal four step challenge process, but two things that we do hone in on. One is medical billing is by law supposed to send you three notices an initial, secondary, and a final notice. They often skip one or all those mm -hmm. steps. Well, okay, wait, explain that though. So you get a medical bill in the mail and, the ne and you didn't pay it and the next month you get another bill and the next month you get another bill. I mean, they're pretty good about sending those bills, but they're just bills. They're not a final notice or end. Is that what you're trying to well, say? Well, no, that they're the supposed difference? to send the first, second, and third. And mm -hmm. the third one is that and when, when we launch our investigation, the collection company goes to see who sent what. And when they don't find that they sent all of them, we get a sheepish... Deletion letter. It doesn't say why they deleted it, but I've confirmed this with many of my associates in medical billing that that's how they get the deletion because they didn't send one of those notices. So you get three shots. If they don't send them all, it's gonzo. Second one is the HIPAA Act, which is really, really important. The HIPAA Act basically says that doctor-patient confidentiality, you cannot share patient information with a third party. Who's the third party? The collection company. Right. So, right. So we do have a, a real good um, success rate with them. And the other third again, factor. Again, 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 again. Just because he gets it off the credit report doesn't mean you don't owe it. You still owe the bill. Right. He's just helping right. you to get that credit score better. And then the third factor is medical billing. There's so much of it going on. Mm -hmm. They are inundated. They're not staffed correctly. You've got imperfect people doing a job that needs to be done perfectly. Keep in mind, when someone puts something on your report because there's so much writing on it, mm -hmm. they cannot go from step A to step C. They have to abide by almost 500 laws under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and Fair Credit Reporting Act. If any of those are in violation, there's a bunch of sub laws. If they violated any of your rights, that item has to come off. Why? Because you do have rights. You can't have people put things on erroneously. Right. So medical billing messes up a lot more. Okay. So that um, one's number one easiest of them all. That's easiest. Okay. Yeah. Now what about late payments? Uh, if somebody if somebody made a late payment on their car loan or made a late payment on a credit card and that happened, you know, six months ago versus five years ago, is there more, do you see more you know, success with one over another doesn't really matter when it happened. It's just whether you get the success or you don't. It does. It okay. does matter. Okay. So the more seasoned something is, the better. If, a, if an account's closed, it's going to be easier. Why? Guess what? They're not going to be able to find the paperwork to prove when we launch our investigation. I'm not saying we can't get items off that are recent. They're just more difficult. They're more easily accessible. But when you're dealing with something that's current, a, a current late payment, it's going to be more difficult. If you have a pattern of being late, it's going to hurt our chances. So okay. if you're if you're have an isolated incident, it's going to increase our odds. But I never want to prejudge. We just got five Chase mortgage lates off of a client. Wow! And that you're is talking a big about one. the top of the food chain, right? And this lady tried to pin me in. She's an Armenian lady, and you know she came to me doing the Armenian thing because I'm the Armenian white boy and saying, "Hey, you know, <laughs> can you get this off for me? Can you're you the do Armenian this? white boy? Explain that a little bit for us." <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I love my people, but the fact of the matter is, okay, so I, you're Armenian. I am Armenian. Okay, yeah, okay, I am, okay. Ar <laughs> I am Armenian, but I'm a white boy. I, 
my dad never spoke Armenian to me, so I don't speak Armenian. So. Got it. Well, well I would was, say by the tone of your skin next to mine, I'd say you're definitely not the uh, the white boy. But <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, in my circles, and it's said affectionately, I'm just we, kidding. and, and I'm they kidding. love it. They love it. You know, it's the fact of the matter is I don't speak, and someone will shame on you and want to slap me upside right, my head. Right, right. But um, yeah, so she says, um, you know, you got to help me, and can you tell me you're going to do it? And that's very difficult. It's Chase. Right, right. But I said, look, you know, this is what we can do, and we'll do everything possible. And we got those items off, and she was ecstatic, and the loan officer was ecstatic, and they went and got the loan when they were on the outside looking in. So all right, cool. so let's let's talk really quick because I try to keep these videos to about 20 minutes so that people can hear it all, and sure. they don't, you know, they don't walk away; they get to absorb it all. So I want to make sure uh, that we get to the next pieces fairly quickly, and then. Um, shut it down but so talk really fast about bankruptcy and foreclosure what have been your um, you know success rates with that um, bankruptcies will get off as they're getting more toward the end it's mm -hmm. probably easier we do get them off they're generally not issues when you're that late because of loan factors so I'll let them know if it would be an issue for a loan as I have underwriting experience and then foreclosures we can get off they are difficult you know they do their job a little bit more um Thoroughly. Thoroughly. <laughs> so, um, but the fact of the matter is we can get them off and we do get them off. But okay. it's, it's risk versus reward. Yeah, that's awesome. So if anybody here, again, if you guys want to start putting questions into the feed, if mm -hmm. you haven't been doing so already, please keep doing that. Text me, text the word mom to 474747. You could ask me those questions there. And we'll continue the feed even after the, um, the premiere is over. We'll continue the feed for as long as those questions keep coming in. So, you know, please just keep asking away. Um, I will, if you guys want to get a hold of Steve on the next slide, you can actually see his name, his telephone number, a picture of him. He is the credit cowboy and you guys are more than welcome to call him, call him direct, talk to him about credit. Um, he will go over the program with you, mm -hmm. what his fees are, the costs, the charges, if it is something that you feel that you want to do for you. Um, th this wasn't absolutely, uh, this is about credit and how important that credit is for your home loan process. It's not necessarily a sales pitch to get you over to credit um you know credit repair but because he works in credit repair he just knows so much and he's so uh you know educated in that in that field so if you guys have questions please feel free you can call steve directly you can call me you can text me text the word mom to 474747 and um you know we'll we'll definitely get you guys on your way so the uh the next slide that we've got here is our apply now slide mm -hmm. and i just want to kind of go through these uh pieces with you really quick we're just about done but it is really important if you guys do want to know where your credit report is today and you want to know what is your score what can I do to improve it what should I pay off maybe Steve's got a credit account that he says hey go open up this credit card because you'll see um, a massive change in your credit score very quickly I think we've talked about that before you've actually got a credit card company that will do a secured card Absolutely. without pulling credit right and what do you typically see on average in a rate you know in the credit score change just by opening the account it's about 20 20 to 30 points in about a 30 to 45 day period. So 30 to 30, 30 to 45 day period, you see about 20 to 30 points. Think about that right now. We're talking about if you wanted down payment assistance, you need 640. Well, if you have a 610 credit score, we pull the credit, give you a couple tips of what to fix. You open up maybe this new credit card and you guys are there. In 45 days, you've got your 640 and you're ready for your down payment assistance. So what is the easiest way for us to be able to do that for you, consult you and tell you what to do and get you started on the right path moving forward? Forward, go to my website. You guys want to apply online. If you go to mortgagemomradio.com, there is a big apply button at the top of the screen on the uh, right hand corner. Just click on it. It's going to take you to the link. You're going to fill out your credentials and you're going to put all of your information in. It will ask you if we have your consent to pull credit, which of course we won't do unless we have that consent. Right. But I will pull that credit report for you. And if you do want to talk to Steve, I will give him a copy of that credit report with your permission so that you guys can have a really, really good consultation and you know discussion about the credit report and what should be some steps that you can take all on your own and maybe it's something that 
you know, your services might, you know, help help you. So um, definitely something to do, but go to the apply button if you guys want to get that started, if you want to have that opportunity for the credit repair. Uh, the next thing that I want to make sure that you guys know is how to contact us. So all on your screen right now, you can see you guys always text the word mom to 474747. You guys can find us on Facebook. It's Mortgage Mom Radio. Every handle I have everywhere, every call sign is Mortgage Mom Radio. So yeah. you type us into Instagram, you put us in Twitter, um, you guys go to Facebook. You can always find us. Just don't forget the radio. There's a lot of people out there that call themselves Mortgage Mom, but it's fakers. not me. Like they're fakers. <laughs> they're not fakers. There's a lot of moms and there's a lot of moms <laughs> that do mortgage, but I am Mortgage Mom Radio. Mortgage Mom Radio. Um, and then obviously you can call me. You can call my office at 844-935-3634. And then Yelp us. If you guys are enjoying this, this is the fifth video that we've done. Mm -hmm. And trust me, we work every day. You know, I'm doing loans every single day. I'm helping everybody. We're creating these videos for you. We're bringing you the education we're doing everything that we can possibly do to make sure that your loan process and your home buying experience and even for refinances goes as smoothly as possible so please if you guys enjoy what you're seeing if you're liking this go to yelp and and give us give us a review i'd really really appreciate it that'd be fantastic for us and again it's mortgage mom radio so that's really it is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to mention because i kept cutting you off quite a bit no, I mean, um, you can go to askthecreditcowboy.com. Oh, there's, I like that. There's uh, information there for you on credit, just questions for credit. You can leave a question, and I will put it there. I'll answer it there online as well. So, And then you can go, obviously, to creditlawsolutions.com as well if you want to get in touch with us. But the main thing is, is change your credit, change your life, and get a loan. That's that is, what you want to do. That is right. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, again, we'll stay right here, and we'll keep answering questions in the feed. Keep them coming, and we won't leave until it's over. And uh, we hope to see you all next week for our, for our next workshop. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye.